The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. Words of Isaiah and of Jesus. All God's blessings, everyone. This is our Sunday video worship for the parish of the Upper Kennebecasis in beautiful Kings County, New Brunswick. And I'm the Reverend Dr. Chris McMullen, the priest in charge. And this is December 13th, 2020, the third Sunday in Advent, Joy Sunday in the Christian calendar. May God bless us as we worship him together. Our liturgy is from our books of alternative services. I presume many of you have those at home, so I will be referring to page numbers. You can download the BAS, though, if you search for a book of alternative services, Canada Anglican or something like that. On the Internet, you can find a version that you can download onto your computers. So I'll be referring to the pages because for Advent, I'll be jumping around a bit to various appropriate prayers. And uh, also with this video, you'll find a link to my script page where I've got the lyrics for the hymns. Uh, an Affirmation of Faith from Australia, and uh, the Intercessions for Advent uh, from Common Worship of the Church of England. So uh, I'll refer to all that as we go along. So we begin on page 96 with the Advent responses, number one, page 96. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Will you not give us life again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that waits in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. O come, O wisdom from on high, who orders all things mightily. To us the path of knowledge show, and teach us in her ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, O come, great Lord of might, who to your tribes on Sinai's height in ancient times once gave the law, in cloud and majesty and awe. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, O rod of Jesse, stem from every foe, deliver them that trust your mighty power to save and give them victory o'er the grave. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. <clears throat> o come, O key of David, come, 
and open wide our heavenly home make safe the way that leads on high and close the path to misery rejoice rejoice emmanuel shall come to thee o israel o come o day spring from on high and cheer us by your drawing nigh disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadows put to flight rejoice rejoice emmanuel shall come to thee o israel o come desire of nations come and bind the hearts of humankind o bitter bitter wars to cease and be for us the prince of peace rejoice rejoice emmanuel shall come to thee o is if you can turn to page 692, page 692 in the Book of Alternative Services, there you will find in the home prayers At the top of the page, a prayer of confession of our sins. Let us remember before God our selfish ways, the things we have done wrong, the sorrows we have caused, the love we have not shown. Most merciful Father, Forgive us our sins against you and against each other. Strengthen us to overcome our weaknesses, that we may live in love as you would have us live, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. Keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This is a little earlier in the home prayers, on page 687, you'll find a prayer and candle lighting ceremony for Advent, page 687. This is the third Sunday in Advent. We light the pink candle amongst our blue candles, our purple candles in our Advent wreaths. In the midst of our purple for repentance, sorrow for our sins, in the midst of our blue candles, if you use those, for our blue mourning and lamentation that the world is not the way we would wish it to be and not the way God purposed it to be yet. We light a pink candle for joy. We can rejoice even in the face of our sorrows and our disheartenment. I'll be speaking on that uh, from our epistle reading, which I'll read in a minute. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Those who follow me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Light one candle for joy, one bright candle for joy. Every nation will find salvation in Bethlehem's baby boy. Source of all light, 
Send your Son, Jesus Christ, to shine in our dark world. Help us to prepare our hearts to receive him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, our one God, now and forever. Amen. Our collect for the third Sunday in Advent may be found on page 270, page 270 in the BAS. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of power and mercy, you call us once again to celebrate the coming of your Son. Remove those things which hinder love of you, that when Jesus comes, he may find us waiting in awe and wonder for him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, our one God, now and forever. Amen. First lesson assigned for the third Sunday in Advent in the Common Lectionary is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 61, reading verses 1 to 4 and 8 to 11. The Good News of Deliverance. This is a passage that Jesus spoke from when he began his ministry. We'll hear that in the Epiphany season in the new year. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Verse 8. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm assigned for today is actually a canticle. It's actually the song that Mary sang when she found out she was given the privilege of bearing the Savior into the world of Magnificat. And you can find it on page 80. Six. 86 of the Book of Alternative Services, Luke 1, 46 to 55. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations shall call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him. In every generation, he has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. 
He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our forebears, to Abraham and to his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And our epistle lesson assigned for Sunday is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians, reading in chapter 5, verses 16 to 24. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be found acceptable in your sight in this video worship, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. If I asked you what the shortest verse of the Bible is, if you remember at your Sunday school training, you would probably say, John 11, verse 35. Jesus wept. It is the shortest verse in the English Bible, two words. And it is a beautiful verse. In our times of sorrow, in our times of disappointment, in our times of suffering and pain, in our times of loss and grief, Jesus, who lived our human life, suffered as many of us are called to suffer, died on our behalf, but rose again and said his spirit that he might be with us. And when we weep, Jesus weeps with us just as he wept at the grave of his dear friend Lazarus. But you would be wrong. It's not the shortest verse in the Bible in the original Greek, which the Holy Spirit uh, inspired in John had in St. Paul. Rejoice always. Please remember, that's the shortest verse in the Bible. The command to rejoice always. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16. In Greek, Jesus wept. And a krusen ho Jesus is three words made up of 16 letters. Rejoice always beats it by one word and two letters. It's only 14 letters and two words. Pantata kairate. Pantata kairate. Rejoice always. Now, Paul is writing to a church that he's already tried to comfort and uh, encourage who are facing persecution, facing suffering a very small, belaggered minority of poor people in the face of the might and the power and the violence, the evil of the Roman Empire, which is yet to be converted to Christianity. And uh, although we can bless God that we live with all the benefits of Christendom and of Western civilization that the scriptures have inspired and guided, our societies to put into practice. Nonetheless, in this COVID-19 pandemic time and often in our lives, we're not so sure we can rejoice always. We're not so sure we can light the joy candle 
in the midst of the blue mood in which we are experiencing, whether it's from grief, whether it's from loneliness, whether it's from pain and suffering, whether it's from just disheartening disappointment, whether it's those times the Christian mystics called them, we have the dark night of the soul and the spirit of God grieves in us and we're just so aware of everything that's wrong and tragic and we long for hope. Very much the Advent mood, eh? O come, O come, Emmanuel, who mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. But as well as commanding his readers, you and I, First Thessalonians, to rejoice always. And of course, at the conclusion of his epistles, this is sort of his final word. He also gives us several hints, and I just want to highlight three of the hints here. He refers to uh, the words of the prophets, taking scriptures seriously. He refers to abstaining from every kind of evil. Evil is something that just handicaps our spirits and darkens our heart, and, and we can't rejoice in that way. He refers to all kinds of things, but I want to just mention three things. Verse 18, give thanks in all circumstances. Verse 12, hold fast to what is good. Sorry, verse 21, hold fast to what is good. And then verse 17, to pray without ceasing. So first, give thanks in all circumstances. I told you before about the old fellow in Albert County. I'd often see him at the post office pick it up my mail, or I'd see him over at the garage where the elders of the village in um, Riverside Albert tended to gather every morning, you know, and he'd be there to start up a conversation with someone. He lived alone, it's kind of lonesome. And I'd say, well, how are you doing this morning? And he'd say, well, preacher. I love the way they called me the preacher down there in Albert County. Well, preacher. I woke up on the right side of the grass this morning. What else can I ask for? Yes, our glasses may be half empty. They may feel like they're three quarters empty, but they're a quarter full. They're half full. There's always something we can thank God for. It may not be praise the Lord, maybe praise the Lord anyway, but there's something we can thank God for. Even if it's only that we have someone to complain to. Someone who promises us, in all of his patience, which we get frustrated with, I know, who promises us all this suffering, all this challenge, is serving a higher purpose for our good and our joy and his kingdom, and even the blessing of others. We can't see that. We can thank God for it, that Jesus rose from the dead, that he's coming again in glory. We can rejoice. And in the New Testament, the word rejoice always has a future reference we can take joy from the future into our present circumstances now. <coughs> Excuse me. Wish I could edit that out of the video. The second thing Paul says in verse 21, which I want to highlight right now, is to hold fast to what is good. To hold fast to what is good. We can focus on the dark, or we can focus on the candle that's burning. We can focus on what's wrong, or we can focus on what's good. And we can hold fast to whatever good there is. It may not be much except a shared friendship, except a word of comfort. But we can hold fast to that. And so, no matter what we feel we don't have, what do we have? And what does what we don't have? What good purpose can it serve? And we can hold fast to that. Rather than feeling sorry for ourselves, look to see what we can be loyal to. What does promise us, anticipates for us, hints God winking at us about our destiny with him forever. And we can find joy in that. That we woke up on the right side of the grass, so to speak. Hold fast to what is good. And even when we're faced with trials and temptations, as the Lord's Prayer goes, deliver us from evil and lead us not into temptation. You know, even then, 
we can look at what's good and right and true. And we can hold fast to that. Paul says the same kind of thing to the Philippians rather magnificently, I think. In Philippians chapter 4, starting verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. There it is again. I say it again. Rejoice. Let your patience be known to everyone, for the Lord is near. His coming is near, but he's near to us, closer to us than our own breath by the Spirit. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. We're to hold fast to what is good. We're not to give up on our high values, our high expectations. And we're to look for where they're beginning to be fulfilled, where there's some promise, even now, and hold fast to that. And finally, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. This is our big challenge as Christians, and to grow in this kind of spirituality. That we're always aware that we live in the presence of God, that we're surrounded by God, as the old Lorca's or breastplate prayers of the Celtic Christians would talk about, you know. God the Father above us and over us and before us. Our destiny, our eternal lover. God the Holy Spirit all around us and within us the Spirit, God the Son, joining us in our humanity, in our human life, in Jesus, sharing in our human trials that we might have his blessed company and share in his everlasting joy. And to have that sense that everything that we, uh, every feeling that we have, every hope that we express, every disappointment that we mourn, we may do is a prayer. <coughs> we can say, thanks be to God. Lord, have mercy. God, be patient with me. God, forgive me. Lord, bless the situation of that person. Just under our breath. It's not saying you have to become monks and go off somewhere and pray seven times a day. Psalm 119, verse 164, seven times a day will I praise thee. And I do Try to follow a personal discipline of offering seven prayers of thanks to God. Seven times of, of um, conscious, formal prayer. When I get up in the morning, when I begin my work, my e evening prayers, my morning prayers, three, me three mealtime graces, and then a final prayer at the very end of, of the day. Father, circle me tonight with your protection. Jesus, surround me tonight with your affection. Spirit, may I sleep this night in peace, knowing that my final end is in resurrection. That's my final prayer of the day. I have, I have morning prayer, evening prayer, three mealtime graces, and um, I have the prayer when I get up in the morning um, and the prayer when I go to bed at night. When I get up in the morning, Father, I praise you for the gift of this day. Jesus, I thank you for your healing way. Spirit, I ask you to help me obey all of love's promptings at work and at pray. Those seven formal prayers, times during the day, are, are really just meant to kind of space and encourage me to have an ongoing prayerful spirit. I'm not there yet, but I hope to be someday, to pray without ceasing, you know, to always be living in the presence of God. Almighty God, in whom we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray thee so to guide and govern us by thy Holy Spirit, that in all times and circumstances we may know that we are ever living in thy sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Beautiful prayer from the prayer book. In that sense. So, how 
do we rejoice always? How can we know an unconquerable joy even in our trials? How can we keep the pink candle burning amidst the blueness of our days? Give thanks to all circumstances, hold fast to what is good, and pray without ceasing. Perhaps you've read the book by C.S. Lewis, Surprised by Joy. It's his autobiography and it's a wonderful book. And then he talks about something that he learned from an English philosopher, Samuel Alexander. And Samuel Alexander based a lot of his philosophy on what he called the distinction between contemplation and enjoyment. And this is one of the things that led to C.S. Lewis's conversion to Jesus, believe it or not. It seems kind of abstract, but it's not. It's really very everyday. Contemplation is what we focus our attention on. We contemplate something. Enjoyment is what we experience as we contemplate something. If we're really focused on a good movie or a good book, we enjoy the drama, the, the plot, the emotions. The example that C.S. Lewis uses, perhaps he got it from Samuel Alexander, uh, spoke to me as a young lad because I was on the rifle squad and army cadets. And he used the example of archery. When you're shooting an arrow, you contemplate the target. And when you contemplate the target, you will enjoy the archery, you will enjoy a good shot. But if you if you contemplate the bow and the string and the arrow and yourself and your hand and everything, you're not going to enjoy archery and you're going to miss the target. But if you contemplate the target and let the body do its bit, if it's been trained well, you will enjoy hitting the target. You will enjoy archery. That spoke to me, like I said, as someone who was on the, the rifle Marksman squad and army cadets. You all learn to ride a bike. When you're contemplating the bike, you're falling over and you're getting in your fretful and everything else. My uncle taught me to ride a bike. He kept saying, don't worry, don't worry. Look ahead, look ahead. Just keep pedaling and look ahead. In other words, contemplate where I'm going. And I will enjoy riding a bike. And C.S. Lewis realizes that Human fulfillment and human happiness is like that. If we contemplate our purpose, our destiny, our opportunities as human beings, if we hold fast to what is good, if we pray without ceasing, if we claim God's presence now, rejoice in all circumstances, rejoice always. If we contemplate, we will find that joy comes along. If we try to find joy, if we try to find happiness, all we're going to enjoy is stress and worry and high bills and frustration and cynicism, you know what I mean? If we try to contemplate joy, it doesn't work. But if we contemplate the Lord's destiny and purpose and goodness for us, we will enjoy his blessing as his people. Like one candle for joy, one bright candle for joy, every nation will know salvation in Bethlehem's baby bowl. Thanks be to God. On the um, little bulletin that I provided on my Scrib site, uh, you may find an affirmation of faith from Australia, just a change from the uh, Apostles' Creed. We believe in one God who made and loves all that is. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was born, lived, died and rose again, and is coming to call all to account. We believe in the Holy Spirit, 
who calls, equips, and sends out God's people, who brings all things to their true end. What we're to contemplate. This is our faith, the faith of the church. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. When the King shall come again, all his power revealing, splendor shall announce his reign, life and joy and healing, earth no longer in decay, hope no more frustrated, this is God's redemption day, longingly awaited. In the desert trees take root, fresh from God's creation. Plants and flowers and sweetest fruit join the celebration. Rivers spring up from the earth, barren lands adorning. Valleys, this is your new birth. Mountains greet the morning. Strengthen feeble hands and knees, fainting hearts be cheerful. God who comes for such as these, seeks and saves the fearful. Deaf ears hear the silent tongues, sing away their weeping. Blind eyes see the lifeless ones, walking, running, leaping. There God's highway shall be seen, where no roaring lion, nothing evil or unclean, walks the road to Zion. A ransomed people homeward bound, all your praises voicing. See your Lord with glory crowned, share in his rejoicing. That's from Christopher idol, a great Advent hymn of joy, paraphrasing, you may have recognized it, the prophet Isaiah. Let us unite our hearts in the fellowship of prayer, in joyful expectation of Jesus coming to our aid, we pray to him, come to your church as Lord and Judge. We pray for our premier and provincial government, our prime minister and national government, for all the leaders of the world, especially leaders in uh, the troubled nation of the United States to ourselves. And we pray that you will bless them and keep them. Help us to live in the light of your coming. Give us a longing for your kingdom. Maranatha, amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come to your world as king of the nations. We pray for your church in its witness around the world. Our own parish of Upper Kennebecasis. There's little we can do formally together as church, but there's so much we can do individually. Uh, lighting our candles, sharing our light in our love, in our faithfulness, in our loyalty to what's good and compassionate in the daily world. We pray for Reverend Dan, our missional priest, who is frustrated by what he's unable to do in this time. We pray for our Bishop David, for all your people. Before you, rulers will stand in silence. Maranatha, amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come to the suffering as Savior and Comforter. We pray for those we know who, like Eileen or Russell or Sean, who are experiencing difficult times these days, and we ask you to bless them with your healing presence. Break into our lives where we struggle with sickness and distress, and set us free to serve you forever. We remember each of us people in our own circles of love. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Come to us 
as shepherd and guardian of our souls. We remember the challenges we face this week, the stress that we put ourselves through in Christmas preparations. Our encounters with all kinds of people in daily life, some of whom are pretty lonesome, pretty stressed out, even pretty angry about the restrictions of our orange zone COVID-19 pandemic. We pray for those who have gone before us and ask for your peace on their families. Mary Marianne and Laura. Give us, with all the faithful departed, a share in your victory over evil and death. Maranatha, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come from heaven, Lord Jesus, with power and great glory. Lift us up to meet you. That with Jean and Laura and Mary Ann and all your saints and angels who may live and reign with you in your new creation. Maranatha. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus, do not delay. Give new courage to your people who trust in your love. By your coming, raise us to share in the joy of your kingdom on earth as in heaven, where you live and reign with the Father and the Spirit, our one God, forever and ever. Amen. Back to our books of alternative services on page 63, the bottom of page 63, please find a beautiful prayer. Um, it's actually a prayer for lighting the evening candle for family devotions, uh, but it's for Advent. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe, creator of light and darkness. In this holy season, when the sun's light is swallowed up by the growing darkness of the night, you renew your promise to reveal among us the splendor of your glory, enfleshed and visible to us in Jesus Christ, your Son. Through the prophets, you teach us to hope for his reign of peace. Through the outpouring of his Spirit, you open our blindness to the glory of his presence. Strengthen us in our weakness. Support us in our stumbling efforts to do your will. And free our tongues to sing your praise. For to you all honor and blessing are due, now and for ever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. What other hymn for Joy Sunday? Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let us glad song. Employ. 
while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let wrongs and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow far as the curse is found far as the curse is found far as far as the curse is found he rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love and now may the god of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope, rejoicing in the power of God's Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>